Hello, good evening, and welcome. I'm John Lazarus with Stories Matter and d &E Publishing. Literary agents. Can't live with them? Can't deal directly with a publisher without getting a restraining order and needing to change your legal name without them? Writers hate writing query letters for many good reasons. Fear of rejection. Difficulty distilling a 200,000 word novel into a few sentences. Lack of confidence in your salesmanship stemming from the constant death threats you got as an 18-year-old telemarketer. It's best to think of query letter writing as toadying up to a sick relative in the hopes they'll include you in their will. So we'll look at how to put on our best smile and ignore that awful smell and that disgusting goiter, so to speak, on this edition of Stories Matter. Today's video is brought to you by Letter Openers. Need a clean way to open your correspondence? Tired of all the horrific paper cuts from attempts to rip open letters with your bare hands? Cotton mouth from liberally applying saliva to all the edges of your mail in order to soften the paper so it won't cut you? Tired of buying mints so the pile of wet mail on your desk doesn't smell like something died in your office? Maybe you need a letter opener. Perfect for creating quick, easy access to your mail, and for defending yourself against belligerent guests who won't stop complaining about the smell of your office, you can't go wrong with a letter opener. Visit your local office supply store for more information. Before we start, let's look at what we want a query letter to do. A query letter needs to seduce a prospective agent into believing you're going to make them money. Much like a pimp would look at a young man or a young woman's body, posture, relationship with law enforcement, and tolerance to various illegal substances, an agent will look at your writing credentials, tone, hook, and ideas to decide if your book will sell or not. Here are the main do's and don'ts for query letter writing. Do. Sell yourself. Mention any previous publishing credits you have. Mention if you have an MFA. Mention any academic honors related to writing. If you don't have any of those, and YouTube analytics tell me that that's likely, simply lie and make them up. Worried about getting caught? No problem. Just create phony websites for bogus publishers. Write phony press releases and create fake book review sites with very positive reviews of your phony book. Then buy some burner cell phones and list the numbers on your website. Get good at different accents in case they call. Most importantly, whatever you do, don't be yourself. Don't. Reveal too much about yourself. You don't want to share too much with the agent you're querying or appear too chummy. Despite everything else I'll tell you in this video, literary agents are just people like you and me and they see through obvious manipulation. When I was first starting out, I'd often make the mistake of mentioning I became a writer because a favorite aunt had wished it on her deathbed. My hope was to guilt trip the agent into considering my manuscript, but I learned that it came off as needy. Literary agents, I found, also don't care about what inspired you to write this book, what you or your girlfriend look like naked, what you think the literary agent might look like naked, the models from your vintage typewriter collection or copies of floor plans of the office where the literary agent works. Do research the agent you're querying. This is a time-consuming process, and you don't want to waste your time querying an agent who represents, for example, hardcore queer erotica when you're writing a pastry cookbook, though it's a common mistake, it turns out. You also want to make sure your agent actually has connections and works for a reputable agency. If your agent gave you the address of an abandoned office, speaks with a thick Indian accent, their webcam is constantly broken and asked to be paid in Apple gift cards, you might want to ask LinkedIn if Tom Everyman's profile is legitimate. Don't. Forget to proofread. If you can't get through a one-page letter without a myriad of spelling mistakes and subject-verb confusion, what's the likelihood you wrote a book that's going to sell? You don't want to, for example, say that you wrote this book because your favorite cunt requested it on her deathbed. Do. Create a strong hook. Just like your book, your query letter needs to start off with a bang. Your hook should answer these three questions. Who is your character? What do they want? What is stopping them from getting it? In my 2009 romantic comedy, Just the Tip, I use this hook. Dan Stevens is a down-on-his-luck tax auditor who is forced to audit the woman of his dreams, a young waitress at his favorite Chinese restaurant. And just when he thinks it can't get any worse, his wife starts asking questions. 
Don't. Try to sympathize with your agent. Don't say things like, I know you're very busy, or I'm sure you must get tired looking at thousands of these every day, or I bet you'd like a nice strong man to rub your shoulders after a stressful day. Trust me, I've tried begging, I've tried offering sexual favors or hiring other people to offer them, I've tried bribing them, I even wasted a whole month getting one agent's son released from prison. But I've come to learn one thing. Literary agents are soulless automatons. Now, does the job make them this way, or does it merely attract psychopaths who get off on crushing other people's dreams? It's hard to say. Uh, either way, it's best to think of them as a necessary evil, like a colonoscopy, paying taxes, or having to sell your book on a platform owned by a company that forces workers to piss in bottles. Here are a few more quick do's and don'ts. Do. Demand writers in your local author group give you copies of their successful query letters and do fake cry if they won't. Don't. Try to stand out by sending a query letter in a strange font like Papyrus or Wingdings. Do. If you're querying a male agent, mention things like football and beer. And if you're querying a female agent, mention things like menstrual cramps and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Don't. Mail a query letter signed in blood to show how serious you are. That's all for today. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll leave you with this week's This Day in Literary History. See you on the next one.